my name is John, and I'm going to cover this again. I've already done this once, but uh, when I went to go and set up the video, uh, the final video, I noticed that my volume was very quiet, so hopefully this one works out. Um, there is somebody out in the forums that has been looking at the videos that I've been posting on how to use the TorchMate CAD CAM tools, and so um, when he had gone through these, he was having problems with the alignment tool and didn't know if he was doing something specifically wrong and so this tutorial is for him and covering uh, trying to accomplish what he is trying to accomplish however I'm going to show a little bit more than that as I'm as I'm doing to tu a tutorial I might as well make it for everybody and cover some things that I haven't covered in uh, detail in previous videos so the very first part of this let's go ahead and just do something tool we're go uh, something easy we're going to go ahead and create uh, some circles of different per size and we're going to go ahead and uh, use these for our alignment tool I mean, testing so what I'm going to do is go ahead and highlight everything and move these to the center of my screen and um, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the alignment tool just so you can see where it's out if you go up to layout arrange and distribute you have alignment Notice that's Alt K for the hotkey and Align, which is Control K. Control K, well, Alignment is the tool we want to bring up. Alt K, Control K executes the last known setting that we had used in the Alignment tool. So we'll bring up Align. Well, sorry, I'm opposite. It's the Layout Arrange. Alignment is the one that we'll bring up the actual tool, the Alignment tool. Um, up in the alignment tool, top left hand corner, you have aligned assigned blink, which is going to be your table as you have it set up. I have a 2x4, so this bounding box around the outside is my sign blink. I never use this option. The next one is to align to grid. I never use this option for the alignment tool at least. The next option is align to last object, and I always use this. And then um, the last one is align to selected. Um, that's probably going to be something very similar to Align to Last Object. I've never used this one myself, and so I I can't explain what that one does because I, I don't know. I always have Align to Last Object selected. Um, and then you have just your tools over here. You can align to top, bottom, right, left side, right side. You can center things horizontally, vertically and horizontally. And then you have what I call distribute, but it's uh, called equal spacing. And those are the tools I'm also going to be covering a little bit today. So the very first thing, um, being configured in that state, if you want to center one circle on the other, select the circle you want to push into the other circle. Shift click the object you're going to align it to. Um, the last object you select is the one that is going to be, stay stationary. Everything else is going to move into this one. Alt K which will bring up my alignment tool which is again under lane, uh, or layout, arrange and distribute, alignment and if you were to just click center and center it centered it vertically and horizontally inside of the last object that I had selected um, if you have multiple objects selected let me, let me move this circle back out if I have these, these three objects selected and I shift click this as my last object and I'm going to run control K which will just re-execute my last Alt K settings you'll notice that it'll center all of those objects on the last object selected that's control Z if I have all of these selected and I select the small circle uh, let's not do that let's select these three circles and then uh, the second to smallest circle is my last one control K you'll notice that everything was centered on that circle um, everything else moved so that's the simplest way to center objects on themselves um, one thing you have to be careful about actually I don't want to delete those but if you have an oddball shape let's say you have a five pointed star let's change this to five points and the angle at zero um, you know this looks like you know I mean it's, it's it's a symmetric star 
there's, it's well I guess it's symmetric it's it's got five points so it's more like an asymmetric star and that's why it's going to give us problems if I were to center this on here um, again selecting both objects running alt K and just say center center um, you'll notice that it is not quite centered on there as you can see it with your eye if you were to actually come in here and measure the top of this point to the edge you got 1.32 inches and if you were to come measure um, any of these other points to the edge it's going to be something other than 1.32 0.87 and you can see that visually why is it doing this well each object has a bounding box around it if you select it you can see this bounding box and you can see all of the corresponding nubs which actually correspond to this toolbar up here if I were to highlight this, pay attention to all of the nubs, the outside and then the center. If I highlight the outside object, you'll notice that the outside object has a uh, larger area and so the nubs incorporate that whole area. However, the center of that area is identified by the center nub. As I select between these two, notice that all nubs move except for the center nub. So when you're centering things, it's based on the bounding box and the nubs that are within those bounding boxes. Um, for something like this, in order to center it, you would probably, in order to visually center it, you'll probably have to just move it manually. Um, there are probably other things you can do, but um, I want to make this video a little shorter than, uh, than it would be if I were to go into those uh, types of options. So as you can see, I centered this just with my arrow keys moving it up, and it looks really close. I mean, if you're going to cut this out with plasma and then go measure this, I doubt you'll notice any difference or any difference in the measurement if you eyeball it close enough. Now, um, I do want to cover one of the very first objects I had to create for my own table, and that was my slats, slat holders for my water tray. And what I did... Um, this is when I was learning how to use it, but um, I created, I'm, I'm just going to make this object up, it's not going to be accurate and into scale, but I believe it was 2 inches tall, 46 inches wide, um, and then I, I, I put in some 3 16 inch gaps, so we'll say these are 3, six, three divided by 16. 3 sixteenths inch wide and I think let's just make these two inches tall two inches tall also now if I zoom in on these highlight f7 f6 that zooms in and out to whatever you have selected if I highlight this um, there are a couple of ways I can approach this let me let me duplicate all of this because I am going to approach this in two different ways the first way is to well let's just duplicate this control D and in fact, I'm going to highlight these and control D those a couple of times. If I were to take all of these objects and then shift click the object I want to align them to, I can do an Alt K, bring up my alignment tool, and sorry for my pauses, my mouse getting dry and so I have to swallow. Um, if I want to center these on that object and then do a distribute, you notice nothing worked. I must have deselected something. Let's do that again. Alt K, center, and I'm going to do this equal spacing. Now what equal spacing will do is it will take all of these objects, it will throw one at the very beginning and one at the end, and then everything else will be spaced um, equally throughout the whole object. Now I don't know the measurement that I have on these. I don't know how many of those I created. But if I center, try to get the center to center, I'm, I'm just a little over one and three quarter inches apart. Um, be, on, being on a slat holder, I would not want the beginning and ends cut out. And these I would actually bump up. Let's do a plus one on the Y direction. And if I were to take all of these, group them with a control G, shift click this, control, uh, control one, which is an XOR weld, it's a hotkey I set up on my system. Um, basically, you can see I created a, a slat holder, basically. Um, now, the way I would actually approach this, so I have a little more control over how far apart these really are, is I would come in here, I would line these up, Alt-K, bump them together on the left-hand side. I'm not so concerned about uh, 
vertically how they're lined up right now. And then I'm going to take this object. Let's just say we're lined up on the left side, but let's go ahead and move it in one inch. So let's just do plus one. And then I'm going to go out to layout array with grid selected. Um, let's go object to object, which is going to be more like uh, center line to center line instead of the gap in between. We're going to say that they're going to be two inches apart. And I'm just going to bump up this in the X direction until I fill up uh, my table here. Now, assuming that, well, let's just do this. I'm going to group all these, Control-G. I'm going to bring up my alignment menu again, Alt-K, and center them vertically. And the reason why I'm doing that is to just make sure that when I go and bump this up in the Y direction, that it is uh, exactly one half the way up. So now if I take these two objects and, and do an XOR weld on them, I can delete them. Now if you compare the bottom to the top, you can see I have a little more control. I was able to distribute things the way I wanted to distribute them a little bit more. And uh, just to finish this out, just to give you an idea, let's go ahead and create some circles on the bottom in which we can um, let's make these one and a half inch circles in which we can create uh, sections for water to flow between the, the slat holders so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up here I'm just going to go ahead and bring up my alt K and I'm going to align them on the bottom and actually just so we have everything evenly distributed, let's align it on the left hand side too. And we know that we were one inch to come right here, so let's go in, let's go over one and a half inches in the x direction, plus 1.5. That's too far, minus 0.25. And I'm just guessing if I really wanted to figure out the math on this, I would do it, but I really don't care right now, so. Well, I guess I care a little. But this is close enough for what I'm doing. Okay, so now um, I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it down in the Y direction. I think it was a one and a half inch circle, so let's move it down minus 0.75. I'm going to go ahead and do my layout array. I want these every four inches and I'm just going to bump them up in the X direction. And we'll, we'll do one on the corner there, that's fine. Now let's go ahead and group all of these, Control G, and select this, can do an XOR weld, and I'm just using hotkeys so you don't see me doing anything. And this is a basic slat holder you can go and cut out um, if, if this is you know what you're trying to create and I used alignment tools to bump things over to the left side, to the bottom sides, to the top sides, whatever, centering things um, and I use the alignment tool very often so I would get used to using it again it is under, you can find it under layout, arrange and distribute alignment and align or just use your alt keys, your alt K and your control K um, you can change those if you want to something that's a little more useful, the hotkeys but um, I, I'm just used to using the default and so control K and alt K and you can use those alignment tools so again to summarize um, I'm not going to go over that main piece again but if you want to center in two very simple objects um, and let's just throw a square in here for fun oops control Z Let me get rid of that I was holding down my shift key which in most programs will actually um, create a proportional square on this one it doesn't do it during the creation um, so let's do a 6 and if I were to take this object and shift click this object alt K bring up my menu do a center center it centers it on there same thing with this circle control K it centers that circle on the previous circle um, you can do perform operations like an XOR weld. If I were to do a show fill, you can see what I just created. Um, and then I do want to bring up a plug for um, 
something I've, I've created, hotkeys. Shortcuts and hotkeys. I actually went and posted this out in the forum. You can find this. But there are some things, if you really want to learn these um, hotkeys, you notice that the line to last object is right here. And if you do left, right, top, bottom, and center horizontally and vertically, um, I would probably change the hotkeys for those myself. But let's just test them out. If you want to center something horizontally and vertically, we're going to try E and C. You don't have to push any other keys, just E and C. So if I were to move this object over here, shift click this, and type E and C, you'll notice that it, you can actually call those functions from the alignment tool without having to bring up the actual tool. If I want to align it to the left, I can do a left, or L, right, R, top, bottom, so we can center it this way and do a top. We can center it, to, or let's see, we can line it to the, to the uh, left and bring it up, oops, left and bring it up this direction. The C and the E don't make sense to me. I, I haven't memorized those, but those hotkeys, shortcuts and hotkeys um, are available here. You can print out this list. This uh, There's two pages here. You can print these out um, and now um, in over here on the layout menu, you'll notice I have the Alt and Control K highlighted also and I think it's something that you might find useful while you're getting used to using the hotkeys um, but just realize that you can use left right top bottom and center horizontal and vertically with E and C um, in addition to having to go into the menu and, and click on things with the mouse I thought that was a nice option and I hope you found it useful anyway thank you for watching if um, any of you have any further questions or you're running into problems still after viewing this let me know and I'll see if I can clarify anything.